one that would look at my social media and the videos I post, I think the common theme is I am rarely using loads that are um, balanced. Mm -hmm. Um, if I do have what appears to be a balanced load, there's usually some compromise in my stance. I'm either in a split or it's also known as a lunge stance or I'm standing on one leg or, um, yeah, there's to me, all of the exercise, I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with, uh, strengthening the lateral core of the body. Um, what are like the obliques? Yes the QLs, and basically all of the musculature in what's called the, what I refer to as the blade of the body. So all the muscles on the side of the body, so the peroneals and the outer calves, the TFL muscles, uh, the glute medius, glute minimus, obliques, lats, lateral deltoids, as well as adductors of the inner thighs, and um, even the muscles on the side of the neck. I found that the stronger I make the, the edges of my body, the more durable um, and also the more efficiently I'm able to move because force generated in my lower body gets transferred more efficiently and more immediately into the upper body and vice versa if basically all four sides of my midsection um, are more equally strengthened and balanced. So um, with that objective in mind, I use what appear to be upper and or lower body exercises um, to accomplish two primary objectives. The first is to strengthen the lateral aspects of my body, especially the obliques in the core. And also I implement a breathing method that I refer to as double compression breathing because um, I actually like to use exercises to strengthen my breathing, um, to strengthen the ability for me to breathe strongly um, and to control my breathing. So uh, normally breathing is used as a method to enhance or improve a certain movement or strength application, but um, I actually like to do the opposite. I will use any given exercise from a biceps curl to some spinning orbit lunge exercise with a kettlebell to practice and refine my breathing. Because as I do that, since breathing is the common denominator to all human act or activity for any life form, mm -hmm. um, yeah, as, as I do that on the back end, it then does strengthen movement and also my toleration of these movements or my durability. And, um, you also kind of like super oxygenate your muscles with your breathing method as well, right? Yeah, I do. Um, there's another method that is, has, was taught to me by, um, uh, I, I've studied both the hard style and I guess the soft style of kettlebell. Um, um, in the kettlebell sport disciplines, I was taught a breathing methodology to refer to as anatomical breathing where um, on the concentric portion of, say, uh, a kettlebell swing or a kettlebell snatch, um, instead of exhaling forcefully as I'm bringing the kettlebell up, up in front of me, I was actually taught to inhale mm. on that portion. And once I was taught that breathing method, I found that it made those exercises and my ability to prolong my participation in those exercises much longer. Um, and I believe the reason is that uh, on the concentric portion of a movement, when the muscles are actually contracting and using oxygen and energy substrate, that by taking in a breath on the concentric or the muscular contraction portion, I was actually oxygenating or replacing at the very least the oxygen that I was using. And I know there's a delay on the air you take into your lungs and the, the oxygen that's being used by the muscles. It's not immediate one-to-one, -one, but the rhythm of that breathing just seems to sustain those uh, more endurance-based kettlebell exercises much better for me. And in a way, I kind of plug a version of anatomical breathing into the double compression breathing, which I use more for strength-based and higher intensity Got it. lifts. So there are, you use different 
types of breathing for different exercises, different types of lifts. The more, uh, let's say like endurance based, uh, ballistics, they call them in, you know, the kettlebell world, like a swing and a snatch, you're going to use the anatomical breathing. Yes. And then for something more strength based, like, uh, like a fulcrum deadlift, you'll use the double compression. I'll use the double compression. Yeah. I think that is how. Could you explain the double compression breathing? How that works? Yeah, the double compression breathing. It's um, it's basically a big inhalation in through the nose, and then as and you, so before you even start the whatever lift you're going to do, you take a big sniff of air in through the nose and fill your entire body cavity with as much air as you can. And as soon as you initiate lowering into the exercise, the double compression breathing is a little easier to apply to an eccentric lowering, like. Um, starting at the top of a push-up and lowering yourself down into the push-up. Uh, you take a big breath in through the nose, and you, as soon as you start lowering yourself into the push-up, and you kiss a little bit of that breath out, as you continue to lower into the push-up, you'll take a second big breath of air in through the nose, and you'll just hold that in the body uh, until you get to the bottom of your lift, and then at the bottom, you just blow all of that air out. And... Um, the way I kind of stumbled upon that method of breathing that seemed to work pretty well for me was I was trying to get a maximum for me squatting 405 pounds uh, barbell squat. That was a big goal for me um, when I was younger. And it was just a struggle for me to get to that. And I found that just taking a big breath at the top and trying to hold that while I slowly got down to the bottom of the lift and then pushing out, I would run out of air. And as that happened, so my, my core stability would then suffer. And um, it was just difficult for me. And it was a little awkward for me to, to take that second breath as I, you know, and, and for people that are first learning this, it, it should feel awkward mm -hmm. at first. But I learned that as I strengthened my diaphragm, I strengthened the intercostal muscles in my rib cage, and I strengthened my trachea, um, I was able to perform this breathing method while I was attempting maximal lifts in both squats and deadlifts. And it's now the only way I can pull off for me, um, it's the only way I can pull off what would be my maximum lifts. Um, but I also found it's very helpful in indexing my movements for more um, not maximal lifts, but the offset or the the uh, unilateral exercises mm -hmm. that I do that require not just a lot of core stability, but core stability in planes that are outside of more traditional lifting. And um, some of these lifts literally can pull you off your feet. So the balance that um, is required for some of these lifts is also facilitated by this double compression breathing method it just allows me um it oxygenates me in a way and allows me to pressurize my core for a longer duration of time and um because i tend to really i don't want to cheat on any of my lifts um for me i have to work in a full range of motion i need to be able to hold the bottom position or in the case of a, a pull up the top position of a given lift and really own that exercise before I come out of it. And the double compression breathing allows me, as I said, enough oxygen and enough um, pressure.